Hello Libra, this is your forecast for October 21, and this is for Libra Sun, Libra Rising, or also your Moon Sign. So listen, I can see how you are feeling now that you're coming out of something. And uh, September was very much so a time to reflect, a time to dream, a time to kind of like pull back your energy a little bit, but trust me, October is going to put you on the mark again. We have the sun conjuncting Mars. So energy kicking in as we start off the month, especially uh, October 2nd, when they are exactly conjunct. We have also the new moon and we have Mercury in your first house. So Libra, this is putting you on the chart. Okay, and I want to say happy birthday. It is your birthday month, so you're going to be feeling it even more so than all the other zodiac signs now having the sun in this area. And the first house is personality. It is you in a nutshell. It's also how you present yourself out to the world. And so, of course, all that Libra energy is just extremely charismatic. So you're going to have that working for you. And that itself is magic. Now, the new moon here also in your house, in your first house, this is on uh, October 6th. That is when we place our intentions and your intentions should be, if you're feeling really good now with all this energy, then you should say, I want to feel this all the time, right? You can send that ahead of you because uh, the new moon will place the seeds and that will grow throughout the whole uh, <laughs> astrological year until you get the new moon in the same area in 2022, a year from now, right? So bring all of that good feeling that you do have and send it forward, all right? It's all about coming out, allowing yourself to be free and to be able to express yourself with this charismatic energy. Now, we just want to be a little careful. Mercury is retrograde in this area for you. And, you know, that communications, conversations can go a little haywire and whatnot. Uh, we want to make sure that whoever we're communicating to, especially in very important things, that they're hearing what you're saying. So you want to kind of like reiterate or make sure that they got the essence of uh, what it is and vice versa, just so we don't get miscommunications. Um, but I think you should be good. You're so always in balance and always looking at the other end. And Inky is just extremely playful here this morning. She will not like to be sent to her room <laughs> just like that. So just, you know, invite her into what we're doing here. Now your ruler, Libra uh, Venus, is in the second house this month. Venus rules love. It rules finance, you know, and romance. So it's values. The second house is all those things that we truly care about. So I see a lot of love here, okay, that you're, you're building up and that you're expressing and wanting to share. And when it comes to the money uh, side, it works two ways. You can have more money coming in this month, but also money going out. So you want to pay attention to that too, especially under the retrograde phase, just so that you don't go out buying things that you're going to regret or might turn out to be faulty, that you have to return them especially those high dollar items and Mer uh, Venus is here. So you might find something high dollar that you're to totally feeling attracted to, but then that might just have to be retweaked or returned, that kind of thing, right? Um, but I see that it's a, a passionate time too. Venus being in Scorpio brings the depth of our emotions to our forefront. So you might just be feeling that you're emoting stronger. Uh, or needing that or giving more of it. And I think, of course, it's always like that. The more we give out, the more we receive as well. So it is that fine balance. And you, nobody does that better than you, Libra, right? Because you have the scales. And uh, But let's talk about the big awakening that we've been waiting for for months on end. We've been talking about those retrogrades, which has kind of really slowed us all down to a halt. Now, that is Pluto, and we have Saturn, we've got Jupiter, and we've got Mercury. They will turn direct here in October. So uh, bring out your pen, note these dates, 
uh, we have Pluto on the 7th of October waking up. Pluto in your chart is in the home area. So if you feel that uh, any kind of uh, projects that you might have had or family relationships that's been kind of like a little slow, a little off, or uh, not really going where you wanted to, you will see that force come to the forefront. And of course, the awakening takes a little time to kind of pick up speed, but at least it's no longer retrograde after the 7th. A lot of transformation has probably taken place here for you uh, these last few months. Uh, changes, deeper changes that are, will be felt. But now you're picking up. Saturn is the next one on board on the 11th. And uh, Libra, that is your fifth house. That's for self-expression, creativity, children, interaction with children and so forth. Saturn is the lessons that we are here to learn, to master. Uh, it's responsibilities that we might be feeling and um, that has been retrograde for several months waking up on the 11th meaning you will start feeling that things will be moving forward that things won't be as heavy maybe even depressive sometimes a retrograde Saturn can bring it to a depressive point because we're not able to actually access it in the external world and if we're pr uh, prone to always think that uh, action needs to be external, well, then we're not really getting it. Retrogrades are all internal. We're working on the insides, and this is where the focus needs to be. On the 18th, we have Jupiter, and that's the planet that we love. It's always happy-go-lucky, <laughs> right? Also, in your fifth house for self-expression and creativity and children and so forth. So this is now going to start expanding again. And there's joy here, Libra. Um, Jupiter will always ask us to find our inner happiness, right? That we can expand with it. And how can you best expand with it? Well, when you're expressing what it is that you feel, what you, you love, right? Or spending extra time now with your children, if you have them, or also love relationships come in under uh, the fifth house. So yes, and travel. Jupiter loves to move and travel and experience and so forth. So all of that may now start lifting for you. And I'm super excited because that will be absolutely great. Then we have Mercury retrograde, which will uh, go direct on the 19th. So from October 20th, you will see how that will start speeding up again. There might have been delays if you've been wanting to travel and so forth. We know how Mercury retrograde works, right? So yes, and also within your communication with uh, people that you speak closely with, the one-on-one -on -one contacts. It's the first house. Of, we always want to mirror the seventh house, the opposite house of where a planet is. That's where we find our balance. That is where we see it becomes projected, right? So any one-on-one -on -one communications that you're having will start picking up there on uh, from the 20th, should I say. The full moon on October 20th, that is also now Mercury being direct, right? Uh, will be showing up in your relationship house, the seventh house. So this is going to be highlight anything that you've been working for since last month will now come together here and express itself. This is also a great time for you to just have a really nice candlelight dinner, I feel, because the two of you, if you're in a relationship, can really relate, really illuminate as well those things that are important to you or your partner and loving that. And it is, uh, of course, here going to be dynamic since it's in the sign of Aries, right? So uh, it's you taking initiative.